Hello everyone, welcome to Miss Christine's Carpet Time. Today we're outside in my backyard. You can hear lots of different sounds. I think I hear an airplane and I also hear a lawnmower. There's cars that drive by. Sometimes there's trucks that are on their way to the highway. But I love being outside because there's lots of plants here to keep me company. And my dog is right beside me. His name's Dino. So today we're gonna to look at the book called that's a possibility. This book is written by Bruce Goldstone and it's all about what might happen. Will you get the blue gumball? Well look, I can see that this gumball machine is full of yellow ones. There's only one blue. What do you think? Could you get the blue one? It's a possibility. Welcome to the world of possibility. That's a possibility, a book about what might happen by Bruce Goldstone. What is a possibility? If something can happen, it's a possibility. Will this mouse find the cheese? Here's the cheese. That's a possibility because this mouse might be very smart. It could sniff and find its way through the maze to get to the cheese. It's possible. If one of these balloons pops, will it be the monkey? Let's look. Do you see the monkey? It's possible that the monkey will pop. That's a possibility. What are some other possibilities? If one of these balloons pops, it could be the horse, or the turtle, or the crab, or the elephant, or penguin, or tiger. Those are all possibilities. That's impossible. Something that can't happen is impossible. Might this ball knock down 10 pins? Sure, that's called a strike in bowling. Might this ball knock down four pins? What about no pins at all? Those are possibilities too. But could this ball knock down 12 pins in one roll? Nope, that's impossible. Can you see why? There are only 10 pins in a bowling lane, so you can't knock down 12 at once. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's impossible to get twelve. Could this blue bowling ball knock down one hundred bowling pins? Well, we know there's only ten here, so it's impossible. Will a chicken hatch from this egg? That's a possibility. Will a snake hatch from this egg? That's a possibility. Will a spider hatch from this egg? That's a possibility. Will an elephant hatch from this egg? That's impossible. Do you know why? Some animals hatch from eggs and some don't. Elephants don't. So unless you're reading a made up story, it's impossible for an elephant to hatch from an egg. That's for certain. If something is sure to happen, it is certain. If one of these fish swims under the bridge, what kind of fish will it be? It's certain it will be a goldfish because all of these fish are goldfish. I don't see any other types of fish here. So if one of these fish went under the bridge, it's certain it's going to be a goldfish. If someone cuts down these strings, what is certain to happen to this puppet? You're right, it's going to fall down. Puppets can't stand up by themselves. That's why it has strings. Will it be likely? Some things are more likely to happen than others. Will this be land on a white flower? That's possible, but it isn't very likely. Do you know why? 
Look how many flowers are here. And how many of them are white? There's only one. Probably going to land on one of these pink ones if it lands. But it's possible it could land on the white. If something is more likely to happen than something else, it's probable. Will this butterfly land on one of the purple flowers? That's probable. Can you see why? There are so many purple flowers here. So it will probably land on a purple flower. Possibilities on the wing. If one of these birds squawks, that's a possibility. What colors will that parrot probably be? Take a close look. Most of these parrots have blue wings and orangey yellow bellies. Only one of them is red. So if one of these birds squawks, which one is it more likely to be? It's more likely to be one of these ones, less likely to be the red one, because there's more of these than there are of the red. If one of these birds flies away, what color will it probably be? Hmm, what colors are possible? But not likely. What colors are impossible? Well, I see there are white birds, gray ones, white, gray, all gray, 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 yellow, and gray. So if one of them flies away, what color do you think it's probably going to be? It's probably going to be one of the gray ones. I think that's more likely going to be the one that flies away because there are more gray than the other colors. Now what colors are possible but not likely? Well there's white and yellow but not very many. I don't think those will likely be the birds to fly away. Now what colors are impossible? You choose a color that you don't see here. If you said purple or pink, you're right. Those are impossible. There's no birds with those colors here. A chance for change. If something is possible but not likely to happen, it is improbable. These gumballs are in this machine. What color gumball will you probably get? You'll probably get yellow because it has the most. What other colors are possible? Well, there's green, this kind of lilac color, and a coral. Is it possible to get a red gumball? They're talking about that coral red color. Sure, it's possible, but it's improbable, meaning it's not likely going to happen. So say it with me, improbable. Good job. These prizes are in this machine. What prizes are you most likely to get? Well, it says here the amount of each. There are 200 rings, only 100 mini racers. There's even less lizards, only 50. There's 25 plastic bugs and only one compass. So you're most likely to get a ring because it has the most. What other prizes are probable? Well, there's mini racers, lizards, plastic bugs, and a compass. What prize is improbable? What's the most unlikely one? I'd say a compass is improbable. Pet possibilities. If this cat pounces on one ball of yarn, what color will it probably be? It'll probably be one of these turquoise colors or teal. There's three teal and only one orange. 
Orange is possible too. Can you think of a color that's impossible for this cat to get? Think of a color you don't see here. No, that color is impossible. Suppose this dog eats just one of these biscuits. Okay, how likely is that? I bet the dog's gonna eat them all. What shape biscuit will he probably chomp? Well, I see there's two, four, six bone-shaped biscuits. He's probably going to get a bone-shaped biscuit. Now, what other shapes are possible? There's also these circles and a heart. What shapes are impossible? Well, I don't see a rectangle. I don't see an oval. And I don't see a trapezoid. That seems likely. Your imagination can help you think of possibilities too. What will probably happen when this jumper hits the water? Hmm, close your eyes and imagine you're jumping into water. What will probably happen? You should probably get wet and make a big splash. What will this ant probably do with the leaf? It might eat half the leaf, could eat the whole leaf. That's a good possibility. It might carry the leaf to its nest. That's a possibility too. Will the ant cut the leaf into little pieces and throw it around like confetti at a surprise party? That's not possible in real life. It's only a possibility in a make-believe story. Odds aren't strange. The chances that something will happen are called odds. When you flip a coin, there are two possibilities. It can land heads or tails. Now this is American money, and if you live somewhere else in the world, your money might look different. But take a look at the coins. You might see the head of someone from your country on one side, and tails is the other side. So the odds that the coin will land heads up is one out of two, because there's two possibilities, heads, tails, one, two. The odds that the coin will land on heads is one out of the two chances. You can also say 50% because 50 out of 100 is the same as one out of two. It's half. Every time you toss a coin, the odds are the same. Doesn't matter what happened before you toss the coin, it's always the same odds, one out of two. Suppose you toss a coin five times and it lands tails all five times. What are the chances it will land tails up on the sixth toss? You might be tempted to say that the coin should land heads because it's been tails so many times, but the odds don't change. There's still a one in two chance that the coin will land tails up. Suppose you toss a coin and it lands heads up 10 times in a row. What are the odds that it will land heads up on the 11th toss? If you said one out of two, you're right. Always one out of two chance. Spin to win. Many games depend on what might happen. Some games use spinners, if you spin this spinner, what color will the pointer probably land on? Did you say purple? Why do you think it will probably land on purple? It's bigger. There's more purple than there's green. If you spin this spinner, what color will you probably land on? Did you say blue? How come? If you look close, blue is half of the spinner. So there's more blue than there is pink, and there's more blue than there is yellow. It's probably going to land on blue. The goal of this game is to get to the finish first. So you choose which spinner to spin. Then you move the number of spaces that the pointer lands on. 
What numbers are possible? Let's look. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six numbers, one to six. So all of those numbers are possible to land on. Which spinner do you think the red player should use? I think the red player could use the spinner that has red on it. But you know what? You're moving the amount of spaces that you're, that the number you land on says. So if you land on six, you get to move six spaces. I was just rereading the rules. What about the other players? I think the other player should use this one too. If you land on six, you'll move six spaces. And it says, are you stumped? You can find the answers on page 32. Let's take a look at the answers. Most of the players should, cho uh, should choose the four, five, six spinner, like we talked about. They'll get a higher number and move faster than if they use the one, two, three spinner. The red and green players should choose the four, five, six spinner but there are two cases where that's a bad idea. When you, went, when you want to land on one space and when you want to avoid one space. So the yellow player wants to land on jump to finish. The blue player doesn't want to land on go back to start. So they're both better off choosing the one, two, three spinners. If that was confusing to you, that's okay. Let's look. So here we have the yellow the yellow person here, the person holding the, the yellow uh, player, won't want to land on one, two, or three. So they should definitely choose four or more because they don't want to land on the number three. And this one has the number three on it. And in the answer section, it also said, oh, actually, the yellow would want to get the number three because it says jump to the finish they would win and now blue or green would not want to go back to the start so I would say the green one would want to only get a maximum of three they wouldn't want to risk landing on four and four is on this spinner let's look at the blue one one two three four five so the blue one also would want to use the one two three spinner because this spinner here, it has the number five in it, which means that person would go all the way back to the start again. Was that confusing? It was confusing for me too, but I understand now. It's in the cards. A deck of cards has a lot of possibilities. Every deck has 52 cards. Those are more cards than there are letters in the alphabet. Sometimes there's a joker or two. What are the chances that this card here will be red? Remember that half of the cards in the deck are red. So there's a 50% chance that this card is red. What's the other possibility? Is this card probably a king? It is possibly a king. Hmm, can this card be a 17 of clubs? It's possible. Is this card probably greater than three? Is it likely that this card will be a diamond? Is it likely? Is it possible? On a roll, if you roll one die, what are the possibilities? Well, every dice has one to six on it. So you could land one, two, three, four, five, or six. Can you roll an even number? An even number is two, four, or six. That's a possibility. You might roll two, four, or six. You will probably roll a number greater than two. Can you see why? Well, there are more numbers that are greater than two on the dice. There's only one and two that are uh, small numbers. And every other number, if you look here, see there's one and two. So those are two possibilities. 
There's one, two, three, four other possibilities that you could land on. I know this is getting complicated now. It's impossible to roll a zero. Hmm, what are some other impossible rolls? Could you roll 15? What if you roll two dice? This chart shows all the possible outcomes or sums and the possible ways you can roll each of them. There are four ways to roll a nine. What number do you think you are most likely to roll with two dice? Which one has the most combinations? If you said seven, you're right. Barely possible. This is Squidgy the bear. He has 10 shirts and 10 pairs of pants. How many different outfits can Squidgy wear? You can make a list to show possible combinations. If Squidgy wears a different outfit each day, might he wear a leopard print shirt and purple pants tomorrow? Let's think. He wears a different pair of pants every day. A different outfit every day. But a leopard print shirt and purple pants. Let's look. Here's leopard print and purple pants. So they said that's barely possible. He has a one in 100 chance of wearing that outfit. That's just one of his outfit combinations. So here's the, the chance of getting that outfit tomorrow. And look at all the other possibilities. Race results. If a rabbit and a frog, let's call him Ribbit, have a race, who could win? There are two possibilities. Rabbit first, Ribbit second, or Ribbit first and Rabbit second. Well, what if Robot joins the race? How many possibilities are there when there are three runners in the race? Can you say all the possibilities together without getting your tongue twisted? Robot third, ribbit second, and rabbit first. Ribbit third, robot second, rabbit first. Robot third, rabbit second, ribbit first. Rabbit third, robot second, ribbit first. Or ribbit last in third place, rabbit second, robot first. Rabbit third, ribbit second, robot first. Whew, that's a possibility, but is it probable? I almost got tongue twisted there. There are some ideas at the end of this book. If you'd like to take a picture of it, you can screenshot the video for some inspiration. There's a paper plate spinner. There's a guess again marble bag. And there's a few more thoughts on what's possible and about out outcomes, probability, combinations, and permutations. And Bruce Goldstone, the author, he signs the end of the book saying, happy possibilities. I'm so glad that he gave some answers at the end too. And guys, there's another note from Squidgy. Oh, it's actually from Bruce Goldstone, our author. He said, for Squidgy, the best traveled and best dressed bear I know. Amazing. And here's a picture of our author. Well, thanks Bruce for this amazing book. It's fantastic to introduce and to extend our learning on probability in JKSK and beyond.